So you might think, like, why write comments, right? And it's a fair question. Um, one thing I want to point out about commenting is that commenting does not take the place of writing clean code. Um, it is, you know, again, code is not some sort of scrambled attempt at obfuscating what's going on. Good code is self-descriptive on some level. Uh, when you write good code and you get good at writing uh, clean code and code that uses good variable names and good method names and all these other things that we're going to be trying to teach you throughout the semester, you don't necessarily need to do a lot of commenting. Um, commenting should also not be done to describe what the code does, right? So you shouldn't put a comment that says, you know, uh, sum the elements of an array and then a loop that does that because someone's gonna read that and be like, oh, okay, yeah, I get it, right? Um, you know, so now different people use comments differently. So this is just sort of, I'm describing my approach, right? Um, I'm gonna show you, I'm showing you a little bit of code that I work on and I maintain, and I'm gonna show you a couple of places where there are some comments. Um, We'll talk a little bit about why. So one of the ways that I tend to use comments and some of the developers that I work with use comments is when there's something unusual, right? So if the code explains itself, you don't need a comment. But in cases where there's something unusual going on, there's something strange about the code that you know someone looking at it might not understand right away, a comment can be a good way to clarify this, right? And so I certainly don't expect you to understand any of this, right? In fact, I didn't write a lot of this. One of uh, uh, my previous course developers did. I'm really glad that they put in some comments here and there because it really helps me understand what's going on, right? Uh, and so for example, and again, I'm not gonna try to explain what is being explained here about this specific piece of code. This is actually a piece of the uh, code that runs the playground examples throughout our site. So when you execute code on our playground, uh, one of the things that's happening is you're running this particular piece of code as part of that process. Um, and so here's a comment. And again, this is explaining something unusual about this piece of code. So that somebody later, like me, who's maintaining the code that didn't write it, if they had to work on this, might understand a little bit more about what's happening, right? There's another small one here that does the same thing. Um, down here, I'm gonna scroll to this uh, carefully, uh, there's a long comment that I did write. And again, the reason here is to explain um, a very, very kind of formulaic sad piece of code that then follows that comment, right? Um, you know, and so this, these, these are some of, you know, the, the reasons, right? So there's this long comment here that explains kind of like why the comment is followed by this big, strange piece of code that you might not expect to find, right? And so that's my approach. My, my approach typically is, you know, don't substitute commenting for clean code, right? Code using good variable names, right? Code using good method names and structure the code so that someone who's reading it has a prayer of being able to understand what's going on. Now, there's pieces of code that get incredibly complicated and comments really aren't gonna save you there. There's also high level structure you need to think about and that's stuff that takes a while to get good at. You'll learn about that, not necessarily very much in 124 because we work on stuff that's pretty small, but once you take 128 and 225 and 222 and other courses in our program, you'll learn some of these things and this will all kind of sort of come together and make more sense. Um, all to say that, you know, this is my approach to commenting. So use comments to call out places where there's something unusual about the code that you've written. Um, another good use for comments, and I, I don't have any here uh, to show you, is when there's things that you still need to finish, right? Or there's something wrong with the code that you know is wrong, but you're not gonna fix it yet, right? And, and you can sometimes use a to-do label to indicate that this is something you need to come back to. Right? Like sometimes it makes sense to write a simpler version of a piece of code that's not correct or not completely correct or ignores a few cases that you know might cause problems and then come back and fix it later. Right? And so you can leave a little marker for yourself being like, I need to come back to this. You know, it doesn't handle this particular case or not sure what happens with this particular input, uh, something like that. Right? Um, but you know, all to say, I think the number one thing I would stress about comments is don't use them as a substitute for other aspects of writing good code. 
good variable names typically go way farther than commenting. If you choose bad variable names or write a lot of comments, I'm still gonna have a hard time understanding what's going on. Good variable names, don't need to use as many comments, maybe none, right? Structure, good code structure, good structure, very easy to understand what's going on, add comments doesn't help very much, right? Comments don't take the place of all of these other aspects of just writing really good, clear, well-structured code with good names and, and other features, right? Um, but if there's something unusual about the code that you want to note, or if there's a, like a note for yourself that you want to leave, or for another developer like you know your, your partner on the MP later, um, comments can be a good way to do that.